Chaos. Anti-fascist demonstrators broke through police barricades during a rally against hate there, and then they clashed with right-wing activists. Prior to the unrest, police banned sticks, masks and any other, any other potential weapons. However, dozens of anti-fascist protesters broke those rules, it appears. They also pepper sprayed the leader of the conservative group. One left-wing demonstrator attacked a photographer and others reportedly threatened people who were trying to film the violence. Meantime, here is a video filmed by a reporter there. It appears to show a group of anti-fascist protesters beating a right-wing demonstrator. Six people were injured, 13 arrests were made. Here's Caleb Mopin with more than from Berkeley. We're here outside of Berkeley Civic Center in downtown Berkeley, California. And as you can see around me, there's a huge crowd of people calling themselves anti-fascist protesters. These are people that assembled to counter a right-wing rally that was called uh, for today, for this afternoon, under the slogan, Say No to Marxism. A lot of different forces out here. Now, one grouping that is widely present is the folks who call themselves Antifa. Some of them also would call themselves the Black Bloc, people with masks over their faces, uh, you know, helmets, uh, goggles. Um, they're here for a fight almost. I mean, they give that impression. We've seen repeatedly Trump folks try to come into the crowd, begin, you know, begin sp sending out their message, staying, making statements in support of Donald Trump. Uh, then the crowd kind of circling up, the police moving in and, and scuffles breaking out. <laughs> The city of Berkeley has actually uh, rallied around the slogan, Berkeley United Against Hate, and that's been hanging from all the public buildings, it's been displayed in the stores around the city. This is just one illustration of the ongoing division that continues to take place across the United States, especially in the aftermath of Charlottesville. A lot of different views being expressed here, a lot of anger, um, but a lot of folks that just say they're worried about their country. There seems to be a lot of division, uh, the far left and the far right, political violence in the streets. So a lot of different messages here in downtown Berkeley, California. Yes, yeah, seems so, Caleb Mopin there. The vice chairman of the Libertarian Party, Arvin Vora, told us that violence is being normalized, as he put it now, across America. A lot of the normalization of violence that we're seeing is happening because even at the government level, we're seeing situations in which the government settles its disputes with violence. If there's a dispute with the Islamic world, it's settling it with violence. If there's a dispute with drugs, they settle that with violence. And that example needs to change. So one possibility will be a wholesale rejection of violence at the personal level and at the governmental level. And that would be an incredible uh, I, opportunity for American growth. But the other uh, possibility is an increasing cycle of violence, where violence is normalized or becomes more and more part of our politics. And a violent politics is a rejection of everything American stands for, is that we're able to settle our disputes without violence. It is one of the things that has set America apart since our founding. And to see that going in this direction,